AIOs. Not the kind of AIO that looks like this, right? This is the current day AIO, but what I'm talking about is all-in-oneers. This day glow green thing, seriously, they could have picked a better color to send me. This is the new Vandy Vape and Tony B Pulse AIO. And it's not the kind of AIO that we're all used to seeing. This is more of a billet box style of all-in-one, because if I pop this side lid off, You've got a billet box, borrow tank sitting right next to it. 18650 based as well. It's just the colour that they sent. Oh my God. It's like not just green. It's like green, screaming green down a megaphone that's tied to an amplifier via a microphone. And that microphone's a sure mic because it's got to be a good one. And that megaphone is shouting green, which the microphone's picking up and pumping it into a 1000 watt Marshall amplifier into a big stage set of speakers, which is also shouting green at the same time. Whew, this is green. It's very, very green. But yeah, ballot box. It's essentially what we're looking at here. It's, it's, it's kind of Tony B's interpretation of what the ballot box is. And it does actually take standard billet box slash borrow tank size tanks. How well does this thing actually perform though? Only one way to find out. It's time, it's not a mod, may as well call it an AIO because that's what it is. It's time for an AIO review. So the general tech specs of the Vandy Vape and Tony B Pulse AIO side to side. Actually, no, it's that way around because the buttons and the, the buttons on the actual side here, so it'll be side to side that way around. You're going to be looking at 55.4 front to back because the buttons on here the front, and so is the board and chip. So there we go. So that's why this part here is front to back. You're looking at 28.2. Overall height, not including the mouthpiece, you're going to be looking at 87 millimeter. There is no 510 plate on this because obviously it's a billet box style bit of kit. So, but it is compatible with billet box size tanks. Now, again, I'm going to get more into that at the back half of the review, but not all billet box borrow tanks are created equally. I thought I'd slip that in. And battery-wise, single 18650 with adapter, single 20 or single 21700. So, if you were to head online and get your hands on one of these, what are you going to get? Well, you'll get the box, obviously. You will also get your, you will also get your 18650 adapter. Did I say this was an 18650 mod or did I say it was a single battery mod? It's a 21700 base mod, right? There's your 18650 adapter sitting there. You will also get a spare coil, and that coil goes with the stock coil borrow tank that also comes in the package. Coil cutter, you will get your uh, USB-C charge cable. You'll also get an NI88 set of coils, just ordinary, everyday, single wrap coils and you'll get a bunch of spares for the tank, including a little blue screwdriver. So we'll have a look at this part first, which is the stock coil uh, option for this thing. So what we've got here, down here at the base, is a push and pull fit coil. Let's zoom this thing in. We've got VVC 30, 0.3 ohms, 30 to 45 watts, and as you can see, it is a mesh coil. The coil that comes spare in the packaging is a 0.6 ohm, 18 to 26 watts VVC 60 with a slightly thinner bore going down, as you can see. Still not mouth to lung, it's a much more this one here, but it's just a restrictive direct to lung coil. So those are the two coils that you're gonna get in the box for the stock coil option. You've got your airflow control ring down here at the very base of the tank as well, and the coil basically pops in through the airflow control ring, and that down, down there is your airflow control. Filling this little pod, well, not pod, borrow tank up is very easy. 
There is your fill hole there. Nice and large, so people with older style Gorilla bottles are gonna have zero issues filling this tank up. And at the top here is the chimney where the screw cap fits into to lock the tank into place. So that is the stock coil option. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna pop this thing open and we are going to pull out the rebuildable option for this, which actually comes already screwed in to the actual AIO mod. So this does come with a pulse rebuildable head as standard. Again, your fill port is there. It's basically a copy. It's a copy of the tank, exact copy of the tank. Even the fill port's in the exact same position. But the main difference is what's going on down here. Down here at the base, you do of course have a, you do of course have a very, very simple airflow control. Very simple airflow control that works down there. That's the positive pin. And if you give this whole thing a wiggle, the whole base pops out. So here's the inner chamber that we're looking at. And that's not focusing in. Hold on, let's do that and that. Yeah, the machining's a bit on the rough side in there, but it's still a decent enough finish. Decent enough finish. Could have done with maybe a couple of more, uh, a couple of more runs in the lathe though to smooth it out a little bit more, but that's the inner chamber that we're looking at. There we go, and that goes up into your main chimney and out through the mouthpiece. The important part, of course, is the deck. And what we've got here is a honeycomb airflow style deck. Now, technically speaking, technically speaking, the way that this thing's been rigged, if we have a look, if we have a close up look, I need to get this out. Where's my tweezers? Tweezers, hello, there we go. If we zoom this thing in, right, we've got the positive here, we've got the negative here. So that's negative is milled into the deck, positive here is separate. Technically speaking, if, I mean, I don't know how the hell you do it, but you could, pardon me, you could dual coil this. One coil here on that part of the curve and another coil here on that part of the curve, but you do not have a lot of space in there. I think this is basically a single coil deck, folks. I think it's a single coil. If you're dealing with very, very small coils, you could probably fit a coil there and fit a, co fit a coil there because the deck is split. So you've got the positive all across here and the negative all across here. But I'm thinking this is more this 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 is more down the line. I, th I think it's more down the line of a single coil rebuildable platform head. Once you get your coil inside, you basically pop the whole thing in like that and it all clips into place. We will be popping a coil in here, but we're gonna take a look at the mod first of all. And here is, oh boy, is this green or what? Here is the mod. Let's pop the door back on the side like that. This is the top part where the grub screw, well, not the, the thick, the, the holder screw screws in there, which grabs onto the top of the borrow tank. And of course the drip tip fits into here. 510 based drip tip fitting for the top of this. On this side, you've got your fire button, very big fire button as well. On this side, you've got an air intake for the tank, which heads directly into the bottom of the actual borrow tank. On this side, you have got your battery door. In fact, to be honest, both sides of the battery door, they're better than that. No, in fact, it's not. That side just, you can look at the battery, but yeah, you've got your battery door here, nothing going on here, and we're back to the power button. At the very top, you have got the part where the thick, where the holder screw holds uh, it goes in to hold on to your borrow tanks, and down here at the base, there's nothing much else going on. If we open up the button panel, what we have here is a, top, a small screen, up, down, and a USB-C charge port. What we're gonna do now is get a battery to fit in here. So this is positive down, negative up. So we're gonna pop this battery in here like that. Vandy vape, 50 watts. There is your ohms, there's your puff counter, and there's your battery. One, two, three. Temp control, titanium, nickel 200, into bypass, variable voltage, and we're back to wattage. So they're covering the basics here temp control, bypass, voltage, and wattage. Black and white screen, as you can see, they couldn't really do much with the screen on this because 
All of this is all of this is taken up with the borrow tank and the boarding trip had to fit inside this bottom corner here. So obviously they went with a very small black and white screen. Max wattage of 80 watts, and that's even with a 21700 in place. And it does have temp control. Very simple screen on this. Very simple screen, but it doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be too overly complicated since it is basically a billet box style AIO and that's a close-up of the mod. Put that to one side and we're going to have a look at this again. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pop a coil in here. Um, let's see. What are we going to pop in? Should be in fact, you know what? I mean looking, looking at the deck, I would go fuse clap to nothing. Nothing too fancy with this. I'm going to go with a fuse clapton for this. That's what I'm going to go for. Not a frame staple. I want a fuse clapton. Uh, that'll do. So simple fuse clapton. Is that going to have enough clearance? Or am I going to have to? I might need to stretch the coil out just a touch. So what we need is that. Just stretch the coil out just a bit. Give it a squeeze. So we're dealing with post holes here. It's a flat head screw. Unscrew you and unscrew you. Wow, well, where is it? There it is. Just like that. How deep are the post holes? They are relatively deep, so I'm going to cut this to 4.5 millimeter. Right there. Perfect. And we're going to pop this coil in here like that. Just like that. Hold everything in place. And then we'll screw this down. And then we will pull the coil out apart a bit more. And get the coil and push it into the middle. Round about there. Might need to pull up the centre just a bit to level the coil out. I've probably cut... Nah, in fact, I haven't cut the legs too long. That looks good to me. You've got an equal gap spacing all the way around. I mean, you you probably could cut the legs down to 4 millimetre or 3.5, but then you're running the risk of having the base of the coil too close to the bottom of the airflow loop. What you really want with this kind of half moon circle thing is an equal distance going all the way around the coil. That's why I cut it at 4.5, because that way I, that, that, that way you're, you're basically going to get an equal distance around the entire coil. And there we go, folks. Let's just do that. So that's the coil in place, and now we need to dry burn it. In the packaging, you probably noticed there was no 510 adapter. It doesn't need it. See the airflow controller? If you keep unscrewing the airflow controller, what's underneath is a 510 pin. Tony B, he doesn't miss a trick. He really doesn't. So this deck will just screw straight on here. Red, ta uh, red stag build tab. Dun, 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 dun. Give this a quick dry burn. through the rainbow, straight to glow, and because it's a spaced coil, it instantly settles in. Now, wicking. Now, the way this thing works is the way that a lot of borrow tanks of this style actually work. The juice actually falls literally in from holes drilled into the top of the main chamber, and the juice travels down these holes here to hit the cotton that you've got sitting here. So you need to have enough cotton 
to make sure that those holes are actually filled. Because if you don't, gravity will work against you and you'll end up with a completely flooded deck which isn't fun because then you've got to take the base of the bottle tank out and drain everything off. So what we're going to do is this. We are going to feed this cotton in here. Cotton God's cotton, not a sponsor. And we are going to leave about half an inch on either side. We are not going to rake this. We need as much cotton as we possibly can get here. All we're going to do is push the cotton, the end of the cotton down like that and making sure you've got this entire little catch cup here filled from one end to the other with cotton so again we just need to pop the cotton down because again the wicking's not coming from underneath so it doesn't matter if you put a bit of pressure on the ends of the cotton to fit it in and you're going to end up with something that looks like that now what we're going to do is we're going to juice this thing up Just like that. And then we're going to soak up the cotton to make sure that the cotton itself expands out before we clamp this thing into the bottle tank itself. So we're just going to juice this thing up to swell the cotton out. One more line across the coil. That is looking good to me. And then what we do is we unscrew this Try not to get my hands covered in e-liquid. There we go. Grab it by the 510. And then we are going to just nudge this backwards and forwards. You'll start to feel a bit of pressure. That's the cotton going up against the juice inlet ports. When you feel the pressure, just keep working the deck back and forth. And then eventually... Oh, hold on, wrong way around, but you feel eventually, if you get the deck the right way around, it'll just simply pop in like that. And that's us, got everything all in place. Get the airflow control ring, because you can't forget this, you've got to have the airflow control ring in there. Get the airflow control ring back in place. Set the airflow for what you want. I'm going to have mine fully open. Pop the top open, and then we'll fill the bottle tank itself up just like that pop you upright to let the juice start to work its way down the juice intake holes bottle tank in there we go that's the holder in and let's see what this is coming out at 0.32, the coils are rated for 0.35, so that'll do me. And there we go, that's the Van de Vape AIO coiled up, wicked up and ready to go. Let's head back up top. So, running this at 50 watts just to bed the coil in. Um, yeah, just to bed the coil in. And we're off, airflow control is fully open. Simple fuse clapton. I think it's dual core fuse. It's not even a big one. Simple fuse clapton. So a lot of people overlook fuse claptons and skip straight to alien coils. But a good a good coil maker, a good coil maker, if they get the fuse clapton nice and tight, you'll get pretty damn good flavour out of them. That's single single dual core fuse clapton in this deck, and this is phenomenal flavour. Phenomenal flavour. No complaints. That's a little bit in the hot, well, not hot, warm side. Because it's surprisingly restrictive, this thing. If you go back to the table cam, you'll notice the airflow control ring, the hole for it fully open, isn't really all that big. So you are looking at a rather restrictive deck. We're going to dump this down to 40 watts to cool off the vape a bit. That's better. Don't like hot vapes, never have. And there we go, folks. 
Apart from the hideous colour, that was the Van de Vape and Tony B Pulse AIO. What do I think of this? The eyes and the nose. It's essentially a mainstream billet box. That's what it is. It's a mainstream billet box. Borrow tank, battery, board and chip. Now, the layout of the billet box is slightly different to what's going on here, but the premise is exactly the same. Borrow tank, battery, board and chip. The layout is slightly different on an original billet box, though, but I, I, I know where Tony B was going with this. I know exactly where he was going with this. Because the way that this has been built and because of the size of the borrow tank holder, if you're a fan of the billet box or you've got a billet box clone and you've got your own billet boxes with your own billet box style rebuildable decks, they will fit in here. Now again, not all billet boxes are created, well not billet boxes, but not all borrow tanks are created equally. A small percentage of them will not work in this because of connection issues at the base, but the vast majority of them will. The vast majority of them will. It's a mainstream billet box. That's basically what Tony B and Van de Vape were going for with this thing. Is there any actual gnaw points? Ignoring the colour, because it just happened that they sent me the green one, but ignoring the colour, I, I can't think of anything negative with this, folks. I mean, sure, what you're basically looking at could be classed as kind of a clone, but not quite, but... The billet box original, the original billet box, is priced so high for what it is, not a lot of people can afford it. And a lot of people like myself that look at what the billet box is and how much they're asking for it are thinking, why spend that much on what is essentially an AIO? Because that's all the billet box is. It's an expensive AIO. Let's face it. If you look at the way the billet box is designed, it is an all-in-one bit of kit. Now, granted, when the billet box first came out, there was no such thing as an AIO. The billet box basically set the trend. But if you look at the way that the market's progressed, especially, especially over the past two, two and a half years, AIOs are now the end thing. And the billet box is an expensive AIO. It's an expensive high-end AIO. This could be an option. Not this particular colour probably, but this could be an option for the people out there that like the idea of a billet box, but couldn't afford one. And I'm one of them. I don't have a billet. I've got a clone, one of the old SXK clones that's up in the shelf actually. I've got a clone, but I don't have the original billet box because they're too expensive for me. They're far too expensive. This could be an option. And the other good point about this is, yes, it's that tiny bit bigger but it does take a 21700. The original billet boxes don't, they're 18650 only. So you can fit a 21700 or a 2700 in here for a little bit extra battery life on your vape. The build deck that it comes with, with the rebuildable borrow tank is a simple honeycomb half circle airflow flare with a split deck, in other words, positive on one side with the two connections, negative on the other side with two connections, and the flavour from it, as long as you put a decent coil in there, you're going to get damn good flavour, because what you're looking at with the way the airflow has been constructed is basically a half circle, so it's a half moon affair, the entire bottom of the coil and all the side of the coil up to the very top edge of the side is getting air which means damn good flavour. And you also get the stock coil tank option as well with Van de Vape's own range of VV-based coils. And again, Van de Vape-based coils, no complaints with the Van de Vape stock coils. I've still to come across a bad batch. This ticks all the boxes, again, ignoring the colour. I'm starting to get a headache because of the colour of this thing, but this ticks all the boxes of what an AIO should provide to people. Rebuildable platform with an easy to wick on, an easy to build deck. Uh, stock coil platform with decent standard stock coils that come in the box. Decent enough board and chip. Simple screen, but it doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be overly complicated, the screen on this. And it ticks the 21700 box as well. I think this is going to hit the ground running. Not this particular colour, but I think this is going to hit the ground running. It is a mainstream alternative for a billet box. Is it a clone? 
I think it's on the grey line between not a clone and taking ideas from and a full out clone. I think it's on that grey line because again, if you take this panel off, billet box fans will recognise this layout inside. You will recognise the layout that's going on in here. Slightly altered. But I recognise the guts of a billet box when I see one, folks. Anyway, personally, I think this is a good idea. It's just a shame they sent me the bright day glow green one because I'm not going to use this because of the colour. I'm not going to use it. But it's the rebuildable head platform, the, the, the rebuildable platform. Oh, it's a good rebuildable deck to work on, folks. Super easy to put the coil in. Super easy to wick. And that's what you're looking for with something like this. Damn. And as you can see, the wicking's keeping up just fine. That was the Van de Vape and Tony B Pulse AIO. Big thanks to Van de Vape for sending it over for a review. If you thought this review sucked, you know what to do down below. Not that it matters because YouTube's hiding those numbers now. I thought it was good. Give it a thumbs up. Very far side at the top, you've got the latest video. No matter what video you're watching in the channel. And if that's latest What's Up Sunday update vlog in the middle, shout out to the hashtag Flu Family, the Patreon subscribe stars, and the YouTube members that are keeping Vape Vic afloat financially. That's what's keeping this studio running. And underneath me is the Vape Met logo, click on that to subscribe. As always, folks, thanks for watching and have a good one.